are two herds of wild horses on the North Carolina coast. Well, it operates a little different with all these people in it. The Corolla horses near the Virginia border. We're going to Shackleford Banks to look for wild horses. And the ones stranded 200 miles south of there on this island, Shackleford Banks, along North Carolina's Crystal Coast. <laughs> There are no humans living on this island, just wild horses. So the G year was... 1997. For scientific reasons, all the horses have been named and marked. Who's directly yeah. to the right? Directly to his right is Delphi. She's a young female. The hundred or so horses on Shackleford don't live as one big happy family. So what year are we in now? We're in the S year. They live in dozens of small, competitive harems each dominated by an alpha male. On the right is number two mystic, the stallion. In this and particular the case, the stallion mystic and two man. females make up a harem. They come to the water's edge for marsh grass, a key element of their daily diets. They're not them. being fed, they live off the land. Right, we don't feed them, we don't water them. If they get a cut, we don't doctor it. Dilbert, a young stallion uncharacteristically traveling alone, once had a harem four females. The question is, where are your women? But has apparently lost a battle and had them taken away by another stallion. I was amazed that he kept mares for as long as he did. Dilbert at the bottom of your picture spots Mystic and his females and has a decision to make. Challenge Mystic or move on. See those ears? He takes one last look and decides to fight another day leaving absolutely no doubt as he gallops away. Shackleford is a thin strip of land about nine miles long, surrounded by salt water. But wild horses need fresh water to live. And in the middle of the island, hidden from view and unknown to most humans, is a freshwater pond. And all the horses must share it. Is he limping? Yes. The wounded horse approaching the pond is the stallion Lenin. He looks around, sniffing the air for rival stallions. I saw two behind him, too. Here she comes. With the coast clear, he continues with his mares to the pond. As Lennon's harem leaves the pond, they spot another larger harem arriving. This harem has two stallions and several mares. The alpha male is Slash. None of these stallions wants to fight right now. Do they have any natural predators out here? The horses have no natural predators on Shackleford Banks. There's no coyotes, no, no wolves. So really, the only danger to them is people. The key for Sue Stuska and the National Park Service is to maintain the herd with as little human intervention as possible. If you start doing things to them that make them not wild, like interacting with them, then you blow the whole reason why they're here and why we're protecting them for the people of the United States. We love them because they're horses, but these are wild horses and won't automatically act like domesticated farm animals which tolerate humans all around them. If you stand between a stallion and his females like this guy, yeah, he's got his back to the stallion. Watch as he waves to his family to join him. Mystic is a wild horse. We can't predict what he's going to do. He is fortunate. These wild horses are preoccupied with eating right now. Worst case scenario, either the dark mare or the stallion could charge him and do him bodily harm. But watch this. The Carolina Traveler crew got too close to a different stallion during the making of this story. And that stallion charged. Recently, there's been a critical debate over whether these horses should be receiving federal protection. The argument goes like this. If they're all just feral horses, say hundreds of years ago they were left behind by settlers, then they're no more special than stray cats. And why have the government protecting them? Why not let people come round them up and take them to their ranches across the country? So he has told us that there is an allele, a little bit of genetic material. National Park's horse biologist Sue Stuska says there is enough genetic evidence 
to link these horses to Spanish Mustangs and British ponies. But they could have come with explorers, early explorers. They could have come with colonists. But no one can say for certain how they got here. And there was considerable disagreement over what the government should do with them then. Because they had been here so long, they were part of the history and the culture of the people that lived here. Enter it Carolyn Mason over. and other locals who argued that DNA aside, the value of the wild horses to the cultural history of North Carolina, well, that's enough. And eventually, the government agreed with them. Back across the island at the watering hole, there is a problem brewing. And we're about to see something few people ever have. As the stallion Slash and his harem leave the pond, two of his mares accidentally take the wrong path and end up at the bottom of a hill with the stallion Lennon. So now we have this, on our right in black and walking with a limp, Lennon. On our left wearing brown and angry Slash. Uh-oh, here it comes. And with that, Lennon's had enough and charges Slash. It didn't take long, and Slash decides to back down. Lennon limps back to his harem, now double in size. The last humans left this island more than a hundred years ago. And also there was a lot of respect for these horses. These horses have survived and survived well in a place that humans could not. The horses remain. And because they do, all is right on Shackleford Banks. It's a wilderness. It's a place of wild horses and wild beauty. And it's almost like a cathedral as far as I'm concerned. <laughs>